All right, guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna go over the Thunder 255 MTS. So this unit, obviously it's a newer unit, uh, a little bit updated from the, the previous uh, 250, uh, 251. So we do have Synergic Pulse on here, the LCD display. We've already gone over the TIG side and how to program in your memory function. So today we're gonna go over some of the steel MIG. Uh, currently I'm set up using some C10 gas. Uh, so keep that in mind as far as the settings go. I'm running C10, runs a little bit differently than C25, etc. But we'll, we're going to run some steel real quick, real basic steel setup. Then we're going to show you how to switch this machine over quickly to run aluminum through the standard gun. So we'll run a couple beads with uh, mild steel and some hard wire right over to aluminum. We'll do some aluminum pulse and then we will get you guys on the way. So let's go ahead. Um, let me get set up just a little bit and we will get some beads ran. All right, so here we are at the machine. Let's go over the menu, how we're getting set up, and we'll show you guys uh, how to get rolling as fast as possible. So we're welding some, we've got some eighth inch mild steel rectangle tube. We've got some thicker, this is like quarter inch, quarter inch-ish, maybe near and close to three eighths plate. And we've also got some, uh, some three sixteenths thick angle. So we'll just kind of run a couple beads on everything, just do a, a kind of general setup. Uh, I'm going to set up mainly for the eighth inch side. So we're going to go 19 volts. Uh, we've got 280 inches per minute. I'm running 035. That's kind of middle of the road for, for eighth inch. Uh, we're running half a second of pre-flow, two seconds of post-flow. Um, I've got my starting wire feed speed and my ending wire feed speed at 60 inches per minute. Uh, no upslope, no downslope. I've got 0.2. Uh, seconds of burn back just to trim that wire back a little bit, get it out of the puddle, uh, but also not enough to burn it back to the tip. We've got 50% inductance. Uh, my spot and stitch timer is off. Again, wire diameter, we've got it set here to 035. We're running 2T, so just a single click and hold of the trigger. Standard torch, and we are in cheeseburger units as far as a uh, measurement, so we're in empirical. So, Simple setup, um, obviously we've got our ground negative. The torch is set up positive, so we are ready to run. This should be a good basic setup for eighth inch. Probably be a little bit cold on this 3 16 It'll be really cold on the quarter, so we'll have to bump it up just a little bit. But let's get to running. We'll show you guys how this machine operates. Oh, one fancy feature on here. So we do have, of course, the gas purge button. And it's not a press and hold to purge, it's a press and it'll keep purging until you press again. Same thing with the cold wire feed. Whereas before you had to press and hold the button to feed constantly. So if you were feeding line through the whip, you'd have to stand there with your button on the finger and then your leads all tied up next to the machine. So what we've done is you press the button and then it will continuously feed until you press the button again. So then you can press the button, get your lead nice and straight. That way it's not trying to bind up on you. Made it a little bit more convenient as far as, uh, especially for aluminum, where you wanna keep that lead straight where you're first feeding the wire through. A Little more convenient. So, trick out of the way. Let's go ahead and uh, get some welding done. Some nice hot little tacks. We're gonna do uh, a drag and then we'll do a push on eighth inch. Got that real crisp sound. If we are getting some spatter, that's where we can go and turn our inductance up just a little bit. probably a little bit we're probably a little bit cold they could probably go up a half a volt or so which we'll just go ahead and go we'll go up half a volt now we're going to come from this other side we're going to push and i am doing i'm not doing a real you know real exaggerated whip just a little move and pause move and pause not even a whip back just a move pause move pause so let's do a little bit of a, a push now
So definitely a little bit hotter. That's kind of what I wanted. Not quite as uh, not quite as ropey. A little more sunken down. So, and then we got a little bit of spatter. We could clean that up. We could probably go up on the inductance to like sixty-five percent and clean that up some. So let's go ahead. I'll run another pass on this backside just to show you guys we can clean up that spatter just a little bit. So to get there, we're going to press our down arrow. It's going to light up our our inches per minute. We're going to press it again. So now we're on the second row. We'll push over to inductance. Let's go up to let's go up to 70%. Then we're back up top at our 280. It's going to be a little tricky running a bead down here in this pocket, but we'll run another little pass and see what we can get. Oh. I can already tell even doing the drag where we didn't have much spatter that that's going to clean it up quite a bit. So now we'll switch over. We'll do a little bit of a push on this side. And there we go. That cleaned up a lot of that spatter. Just making that inductance adjustment. So it might be a little hard on the camera there to get in there, but just making a, going up from 50% inductance up to 70%, that cleaned up all the spatter. So that's one thing to keep in mind. There's a lot of machines that don't have an inductance adjustment. We've had it on um, even some of our basic MIG machines for about the past decade, but a lot of machines, they just have that preset. Um, and what that inductance can do, it can really help tighten up the arc. And so if you are having some spatter, typically we're gonna recommend looking at your inductance setting and bringing it up a little bit. So if you're in that 30, 40, 50% range, probably jumping up to 60, 70% inductance is gonna really clear up a lot of that spatter. So obviously the steel side works pretty good. Showed you guys how to kind of troubleshoot some spatter issues. So let's go ahead, we're gonna shut the machine off. We're gonna switch over to Argon. I'm gonna throw a spool of 045, 49, 43 into the unit. We're gonna swap on some U-Groove drive rolls, swap out the liner to a Teflon liner, Go to an oversized uh, aluminum tip in the mid gun and let's run we'll run some aluminum on the synergic pulse and our standard aluminum setting kind of show you guys the difference between the two so we'll kind of fast forward through this as i'm doing it but we'll get this thing set up and we'll show you how to how to run aluminum through a standard whip on this unit All right, and now we are done setting up the Thunder 255 MTS for aluminum. So drive roll swap, had to find my 045 1.2 millimeter uh, oversized aluminum tips. Uh, we switched in a Teflon liner real quick from another gun from actually the 503 DPI that we're gonna be filming with soon. Put in my 1.2 millimeter U-groove drive rolls, put in a big spool of 045 49 43 wire, and now we are ready to get, oh yeah, and I switched to Argon. So I switched to Argon at 40 CFH, and now we are ready to MIG weld aluminum with the Thunder with our standard uh, gun. So let's go ahead and switch over to our aluminum setting. We're going ahead and set this up on power set mode. So we'll go power set. We're going to drop down. To our wire diameter, we're going to go 045. I'm going to go over. We are welding eighth inch aluminum. We are set up with the standard torch. And let's go back. We're going to go back up and go two seconds of pre or 0.2 seconds of pre-flow. We're going to go two seconds of post-flow. We're gonna go just a little bit of burn back. It keeps going past it. There we go. 
0.1 second of burn back. We're going to drop our inductance way down. Somebody was messing with it. So it'll be at 50% inductance. So now we should be ready to go. 23 and a half volts and 381 inches per minute. So let's see what that gets us. Again, this isn't pulse, so we're gonna be running pretty hot and fast. That's the nice thing with pulse. It does kind of help control your heat input. It does slow the process down a little bit, but it makes it a lot more controllable. So just as a comparison, we'll tack this up with just kind of a standard straight spray arc, which is what we want to, uh, to be in. As far as a, a transfer mode, we wanna be in spray arc and not short circuit. Look, I was pushing so hard, I actually pushed my plate away from me. Edit that out. <laughs> Let me hold this plate so it doesn't move on me again. So with MIG aluminum, we're always going to push. We're never going to try to drag it. We're always going to push as well. So straight MIG, not the prettiest thing. We are moving so fast, half of that I did one-handed. So it's not gonna be super pretty, but it is gonna burn really, really hot. So if you have some thicker material, eighth inch, I wouldn't recommend for it really. This is gonna be on the thin side for just standard spray transfer. If you had some quarter inch, uh, three eighths, um, that's where that would really help come in handy is running the, the straight spray arc. You'll get a lot more heat input for this, a little bit too thin. So because of that, and one of the really nice features about the Thunder 255 is it does have pulse. So let's switch over to our pulse mode. So now we are going to drop down. Everything looks good here. We've got our wire diameter already set to 045 for us. Now we can go to our wire type. It's on 4043. We let me go 4047. We're going to go eighth inch standard torch. And I know I want to drop this arc trim, it's at two and a half. It's saving my settings from last time, so let's go, let's go two negative two on the arc trim. Let's give this a real quick shot and show you guys what a difference pulse can make on, on aluminum MIG. That actually feels just a touch cold, so I'm going to turn that arc trim actually up. Let's just go to zero arc trim. That'll give us a little more voltage without having to mess with the, the amperage at all. That was a good run. That's about as, as good as you can hope for, for running single pulse aluminum MIG. With dual pulse, like on the 253, uh, the 353, the 503, you can get a little more of a TIG effect, pull the heat out of that a little bit more, make it more controllable. But for single pulse, you know, really we've got, you know, a pretty decent, we were a little cold right off the start, which we can go to like a 4T special, which we can cover that in a later video. Uh, we can go to a 4T special, which will give us a hot start option. We'll release the trigger. That'll go to our welding mode. We can pull the trigger again and, and keep it depressed. That'll go into a crater fill and then release the trigger. So basically four strokes of the trigger to control the whole weld operation. Whereas right now we're just on 2T. So it's a real simple point and shoot. But, uh, you know, obviously, there you go. Um, MIG aluminum using the Synergic Pulse basically using exactly what power set set up for us we actually turn the arc trim back up to zero which would be the standard setting for power set and it's pretty much dead on for eighth inch aluminum so 
just a little, you know, little changeover. You can go right from, you know, doing even pulse, pulse MIG and spray arc on mild steel. A little bit of a changeover and you're right to run in MIG aluminum. Running a pretty decent bead on aluminum for MIG with the uh, Thunder 255 MTS. So, hope you guys appreciated the video. Uh, just a real quick, you know, run through on some of the MIG settings. Like I said, we are going to take a deeper dive in it as we go along, showing you the 4TS, running a spool gun, running the push-pull gun, um, and some of the, the more involved uh, features of the unit. But just as a quick overview, I think this covers just about everything you'd, you'd probably need for a quick setup. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys soon.